This is 15 Minutes of Freedom. I'm your host, Ryan Idell, and today's episode is I Don't Like Free Things. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you why free things are the worst things. So this, admittedly, is a listener-requested episode, and it's something that reigns or rings pretty true to me. You see, so often in life, I give time. When I say give time, I want to help everybody. Admittedly, if you have an issue, if you have a problem, if there's something I can add a value to your life, I'm pretty steadfastly committed to actually helping. And it's crazy because at first so long, I put no value on my own time. Right? Like it was just like, ah, it's just a phone call. It's just 30 minutes, just an hour. Like I can spare an hour. Then I started looking at the end of my days as I realized as more and more people have come to my life and there's been more responsibility and there's been more things to overcome, how valuable that hour actually is. If you've been one of the listeners that has been along this journey since the beginning, you realize that most days I wake up between 4.30 and 4.45, make it to the first gym by 6.55, make it to the second gym by 8.30, make it to the office by give or take 10, 9.45, 10 o'clock, don't leave until at least 6.30 or 7, drive home, eat dinner with the family, spend time with them, and go to bed by 9.30, maybe 10. In that, there's not a lot of extra windows open for just messing around. And I set all this up with this big, long, exaggerated story because very often, getting something that's free is the worst thing that someone can do. You see, I quite often, as I speak to individuals that either I'm about to start coaching or we're considering working together, or even just people that I come across that are looking for quote unquote free advice. Like think about it right now in your own life. Like we've most likely, if you're listening, you've been to a trade show in your life before, you've been to an expo before, not potentially a home and garden show, a parade of homes. We've all been to these things. Maybe you even inside your business now have a booth at some of these events. Maybe you've worked a trade show. And in that trade show, you're super excited. Like, you, you I'm going to get some swag, right? Like, I remember the first time in my hosting company. Like we're going to get some swag. We're going to get these little brains that are blue that say brain host on them for the hosting company. And we can throw them at people when they walk by the booth and it'll be fun and they're squishy, they're stress relievers. We're so like just so jacked up. Like, this is the greatest things ever. And we price shop them and we find them in China and we find them all over the place. And it's like this big, massive committee. Like it takes 10 of us to make this decision. Because, of course, as I'm the idiot that thinks it's cool to fly around sometimes on private jets, I'm also the idiot that wants to save an extra three and a half cents a unit as I'm buying these squishy blue brains. Like ridiculous what my value propositions were back then. But in this, nonetheless, we take these brains And we go to the trade show, specifically one in in Las Vegas. We're there. We fly fly these blue things across the country. We hand them out at the booth. I pay models to hand them out, both men and women, not, not, you know, inappropriate models. What I would have called mingle models because I was convinced it was less expensive and less of a headache to fly, to use those people than fly our own people in. And these blue brains were tossed out in rapid, rapid fashion, rapid succession. Like just every time I was at the booth, we're just throwing them, just throwing them at people. It's fun. It was fun to throw the brains at people. They didn't hurt. But then I'd look a month in advance. And wouldn't you know, I didn't get one extra sale because of the free blue brain that I threw at somebody. And I look at two months in advance. I didn't get one extra inquiry based off these blue brains. And I look six months out. I still can't quantify one additional sale based off these blue brains. And I start scratching my head. Like, we have another meeting as a committee. Like, why didn't these work? Like, what happened? We still have some left. At that point, Zeus, my pit bull, is chewing on a couple of them, destroying a couple of them. We throw them at each other in the office from time to time. It's like, well, what's going on here? 
And then it dawned on me. Some of the people that are in the office were actually at that show with me. And many of those people got to walk around and go to other people's booths. And I say to people, like, as you walked around, did you guys pick stuff up? Did you take other people's swag? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Why wouldn't we? Like, yeah, it's great. I, I did the same. I said, right now, as we sit in our office, six months down the road from this initial meeting, do you guys mind bringing all the swag that you have from that event into the conference room? And people look at me like I have an extra two heads. Like, well, we don't have any of that stuff here. It's okay. You know, when you get, we get home tomorrow, when you get home tonight, bring it in tomorrow, whatever you have. Next day comes. I think there were three things people brought in. Maybe. And I might be overselling that. And I realized at that moment, nobody cares about something that's free. It doesn't matter how nice it is. It doesn't matter how fancy it is. It doesn't matter how unique it is. Nobody gives a shit that you give them something for free. They put no value on it. Think of your own life right now when you've walked through a supermarket on a Saturday and they're giving out free samples. I used to love that as a kid. Let's go to the grocery store on Saturday. I want all the samples. We didn't buy any of the stuff. It wasn't what was on our list. I just got to eat free food. I put no value on that food. There was nothing that was going to get me convinced to buy the product. Like it's, it's preposterous to think that all of a sudden, when we get something for free, it's going to trigger an event in our mind that makes us actually want that. How can you value something you didn't pay for? But it's not limited to just swag from a trade show or free samples at the grocery store. Think about the advice you've gotten. Like everybody has somebody they call. As you're listening right now, I bet you you can, you, you can even think of the person that you call for advice. For whatever the reason you call them, maybe they're your best friend. Maybe they have some of the things you want. Maybe it's your parent. Maybe you just value them so much that it's them. But you don't have to pay for their time. You don't have to pay for their energy. You're not buying them a meal. There's no exchange of energy there. You're simply asking for some advice. The likelihood of you receiving and then implementing that advice is infinitely smaller. Because you don't care about it. You care more about the 75 cent pack of gum that you buy, that you get stressed out that you can't find it when you drop it next to the, in, down the seat in your car than you do about the advice because you spent 75 cents on the pack of gum and you don't want to waste it. Think of all the places in your life right now where you have wasted people's time, wasted the advice of others because there was no value for it. Admittedly, most of us, myself included, call other people to justify our own positions to what we believe to be right. We are all looking for confirmation that we are either not alone or not crazy in our mindsets. So we call those closest to us. We share with them our viewpoint. We say it in such a way that it's not neutral. We are sharing a biased opinion, looking for them to back up our stance. And what happens when they do not back up our stance? We call them assholes. We get mad. You're supposed to be my friend. You're How can you not see it my way? Instead of considering the opportunity that maybe they're shining a light on something you can't see. But even in that conversation, it literally becomes as simple as you just didn't spend any money on what it took for them to give you the advice so you don't really care what they have to say. You already knew what you wanted to do. You already knew probably what you had to do. You just wanted somebody to agree with you so you felt better about doing it. It's crazy to think how many times we all have given things away for free that just get cast aside. But then it's also crazy to think of how offended we get when someone asks us to pay for something. 
Like I have a Calendly link on my Instagram profile. And I'll give it to every one of you right now. It's calendly.com forward slash Ryan's time. And for the first probably 150 episodes of this show, I just left it out there. And I would take calls from anybody at any time. Book it on my Calendly link. I'd figure out a way to have a conversation with you. Then I started looking at it, and I was having, on average, 10 hours a week of conversations with random people. And I'm honored by that, like truly. It's incredibly impactful to know that my words on this show matter so much, you want to reach out and have a conversation with me and ask me a question. But then, something dawned on me. I can't get back those 10 hours. And although I'm pouring into other people, I know they're not actually adhering to my advice. My gut is telling me they're not because I know they're not exchanging energy with me. They're just taking it. And so I switch my Calendly links. I switch it to, I think, $97 for half hour time and $197 for an hour time. Maybe it's more than that. Don't even know right now. And wouldn't you know, people stopped booking time. It freed up five to 10 hours a week on my schedule of not having phone calls. It's crazy to me because inevitably there are still questions that people feel like I could add value to, but they don't value themselves enough to invest in themselves or you don't value yourself enough to invest in you a hundred bucks. Like how much more impactful is our time together if you actually spend a little money for it? And no, before I, it sounds like I'm on a soapbox, I'm not trying to get you to book time on my calendar. I want you to think about every person in your life that you literally waste their time and they waste your time. Because I have been broke and figured out how to get more money back. I have almost lost Lindsay and figured out how to get her back. I have lost cars and figured out how to get them back. I've lost watches. I've lost every material thing in my life and figured out how to get it back. The one thing I have not figured out how to get back is time. I just, I can't hack it. I don't know how to get it back. At least not yet. And so I reclaim my own time. And I put these links out that nobody wants to pay for. And I'm good with that. Sincerely. But it's crazy because what you don't know is every coaching call that I have I go at least 15 minutes over. Every time somebody books time on my, on my calendar, I go at least 15 or 20 minutes over. I know that I'm never going to be in an energetic deficit based off money that is provided. Because at some point, I encourage you to consider everything in life is energy. Money is just paper, but paper represents energy. It's an exchange of energy for goods and services. It's so easy to get distracted from what really is happening as we want free things. Everything should be free. Everything should be less money. No, you should value yourself enough to invest in something that's greater than you currently invested in. Okay, I don't give a shit if it's coaching. Maybe you want to lose weight at the gym and you're just frustrated that you can't get it done. Go hire somebody to help you. I don't care if you find an online diet and you pay somebody to do it for you and it's $97 and then you stick to it. If your relationship is broken, find someone to help you and pay them to mentor you or coach you or give you something or buy a book. Like shit, there are so many ways to spend money to invest in yourself. I know many of you are sitting there thinking right now, you yourself might even be thinking, I don't have any extra money, Ryan. I don't. Bullshit. Straight up. I guarantee you that if we sat down and went through your exact expenditure, we could find an extra 20 bucks for you to buy a book. How do I know? Because I've went through almost every client I've ever had's exact itemized budget, and I first start by asking them, how much money do you spend every month? Uh, about. The minute I hear about, I get to call bullshit. The actual answer is, I don't know how much I spend. How much is your insurance payment every month? Well, it's around... Eh, bullshit. When you get your 
statement from your insurance company for your car insurance, they're not saying it's around $197. They say it's $197.17. If you don't get fanatical about the details of what's going on, how do you know you don't have more money available? And it's that same lack of attention to detail that's manifesting itself everywhere else. That lack of attention to detail is making it so you're not willing to invest in yourself. It's this crazy self-fulfilling prophecy that exists in every one of us. I used to be just like you. I was petrified to spend money on myself. No way I'm spending money for a coach. That means I'm broken. That means something's fucked up with me. It doesn't. It means you want something greater and don't know how to get it. You can't solve a problem from the exact same place you created it, and your best thinking has got you exactly where you're at now. And by the very nature of that, you know there's something greater available to you. You just don't know how to get it. So why not find someone that can show you? That someone can be a book. That someone can be podcast. That someone can be a seminar. That someone can be a coach. Like The someone doesn't matter. What matters is you and what you invest in. And so all this comes back to the whole conversation of free and why I don't like free things. I don't like free things because I personally know they have no value. I throw away things that are free. I now don't even pick up things that are free. Because I know anything that is worth something, someone would charge for. I can't go somewhere and buy a free Rolls Royce. I can't go pick one up. And I say that. If you know where one's at, let me know. I'll go grab it right now. Message me right away. I can't go buy, I can't go find a free Rolex. The things that have high value, the things that have immense worth you can never find for free. So I encourage you to stop allowing yourself and your time to be presented as free. Guard your time and guard your energy with the highest dollar amount possible because you are actually worth it. And when you start guarding yourself that way, you'll figure out that every day you're able to get shit done.